let's just switch to a more positive note. And instead, let's just go ahead and start counting down the top five best video game endings of 2011. Number five. Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3. Wait, 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 just, just, just hang on a second. Now, before you all decide to hunt me down and kill me, just hear me out. Remember what I said at the start of this whole video? Number one, the quality and or reception of a game does not matter. Yeah, so let's disregard the quality of this particular game, okay? I put it on this list because I actually felt that it had a good ending. Throughout the Modern Warfare games, at least particularly starting with Modern Warfare 2, Makarov has been a complete asshole and the kind of villain you just want to murder. After killing a bunch of your allies and having Captain McTavish finally drop the soap, the urge to kill him increases ever so more. Thankfully, at the end of Modern Warfare 3, you, playing as Captain Price no less, and Yuri raid the building Makarov is at and tear shit up. After dealing with a large number of dumb goons, you finally catch up to Makarov and stop him from his little Fuck all y'all and fly away attempt. He ends up killing Yuri, however, but in return, you bash the shit out of his retarded face and make him hang to his death after falling through the glass with the chopper cables wrapped around his neck. And after all of that, Price just lights his cigar. Priceless. <laughs> I don't know why, but this ending just felt satisfying to me, considering how much of a douche Makarov was in these games. Aside from that, there really wasn't much other than me going, YEAH, TAKE THAT YOU BITCH! Which is why this is only number 5 on this list. Modern Warfare 3. At least it isn't higher on this list, or else I would be sentenced to death. Number 4. Gears of War 3. I'll be honest. I feel that the Gears of War series doesn't have the best writing. However, compared to the previous installments, I felt the third game did a better job with the story and writing. But it still isn't saying that much. But anyways, I thought that this game's ending was still really good in a way. After all the shit Delta Squad had to go through in all the games, finally defeating the Locust Creed felt satisfying, especially with what happened in this game in particular. And I felt the ending definitely showed it. While there is a feeling of victory for finally defeating the Locust and the Lambent, there is also a feeling of loss when it comes to Marcus. In the whole game, he lost both Dom and his own father right in front of him, and naturally, he feels like shit. In a way, I felt bad for him considering his losses, but I still felt happy that everyone, including Marcus, can look forward to a better tomorrow. While I felt that it really wasn't too emotional, I felt that this ending was a perfect fit for the series. Gears of War 3, where overly muscular men can still have feelings of sadness. Number 3. Portal 2. Ah, Portal 2. I had a lot of fun with this game, just like I did with the first one. The gameplay was improved by adding more clever puzzles and obstacles, and the writing was as great as ever. But I really have to give credit to how well the ending was done in this game. So basically, by the end of the game, you and GLaDOS, who is currently a potato at this point in time because science, make your way to Wheatley in order to stop him, since he has taken over the entire facility. And after you do a puzzle battle with him and send his ass to the freaking moon, GLaDOS takes control of the facility once more. By this point, GLaDOS realizes who she really is and ends up learning a valuable lesson. That is, until he deletes that side of her and goes back to the same old GLaDOS. But my favorite part of this ending is that GLaDOS basically gives up trying to kill you, as she sees that it is impossible to do so, so she ends up releasing you from the facility. Then you get sent up to this. Yes, a opera of singing turrets. That is freaking awesome. And after that, you finally end up back in the outside world. Right before GLaDOS sends up a burnt companion cube to take with you. Brilliant. To me, this ending was both fulfilling and hilarious at the same time, which is a testament to the great writing of this game. Portal 2, where robots can learn to have emotion until they delete it. Number 2. 
Batman Arkham City. Just like the original Arkham Asylum, this game surprised the hell out of me. Asylum surprised me for being really good, while Arkham City surprised me by being even better than the original. But this game's ending was probably the biggest surprise of all to me. A good chunk of this game involves finding the cure to the Titan formula, since the Joker has some in his blood and ended up putting some of it in Batman. And by the end of the game, you end up going after the Joker as he has the cure now. It turns out that the fully cured Joker that you've seen throughout the game was actually Clayface. After defeating Clayface and getting the cure back, Batman drinks some of it and gets rid of the Titan virus inside of him. But he saves some as he debates about giving the rest to the Joker. Unfortunately, Joker pulls a stupid and attacks Batman, causing him to drop the vial with the cure. And because of that move, the Joker... dies. I'll be honest, I really wasn't expecting the Joker to actually die. Now, I've heard that he's been killed off in the comics before, but I don't follow the comics or read comic books in general, so the Joker dying for real came as a real surprise to me, and I was left speechless by the time the credits rolled. It didn't even help that the credits had an unsandling ambience to it as well. Even worse is the little extra voice recording that plays during the credits, whether it be the Joker or the Harley Quinn one. This ending could have made it to number one, but it just misses the mark and ends up securing the number two spot instead. Batman Arkham City. Never thought I'd see the day where the Joker had the last laugh. And my pick for the best video game ending of 2011 goes to... The Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword. Out of all of the games released in 2011, I felt that Skyward Sword definitely had the best ending. Arkham City came really close, but at the end of the day, Skyward Sword's ending was filled with the most fulfillment and emotion for me. After going through this lengthy game, you finally face off with the evil known as Demise and end up beating him, even though he is easily distracted by a goddamn bug net. But anyway, defeating Demise and finally getting Zelda back felt very satisfying, and it made me feel happy in the end. But at the same time, I felt very sad when Link had to put away the Master Sword and put Fee to rest. Now, I didn't cry at this scene. I mean, the last thing that made me really cry was the ending to Toy Story 3, and I know I'm not the only one who cried at the end of that movie. But despite what I felt about Fee when it came to the game, I just felt sad that she had to be put to rest, considering the journey her and Link just went through. It just hit all the right notes for me. But not only that, it was also sad when Impa, well, the old Impa, I mean, just vanished away after Zelda and company learned who she was, and that made me feel a little more sad as well. To me, this ending made me feel like my time was well spent with the game, and it made me feel both happy and sad in all the right places, which is why Skyward Sword is my pick for the best video game ending of 2011. So, there you have it, my picks for the best and worst video game endings of 2011. You don't have to agree with my picks, but I would like to see what you would have picked for this kind of list. Now, if you'll excuse me, I gotta go check something. Oh! oh he actually did put me in the credits for doing that intro for him in this episode. Oh well. Thanks, Zero. Thanks. Yo, 50, jump over that big ass. Hope those are okay, dude. Bye.